This is Brad Barth, Vice President of Industry Solutions from Hard Dollar. Today, we're excited to show you some of the new features in our version 11. Version 11 is a, is a fantastic new release where we've incorporated feedback from, from hundreds of users, uh, and we're excited to show you some of those new features today. As we uh, interface with, with customers and folks in the industry, it really became clear that there were a couple of themes that we hear over and over again, and that's number one, People really want to understand their costs and what's driving their costs, more so than ever before in this economy. Secondly, it's really critical to understand the timing of costs, much more so than it's ever been in the past. And so version 11 is really all about time phase cost modeling. Hard Dollar has always been known for its robust cost modeling capability. What we've now added is another dimension, the dimension of time. And what that does it really enables and opens up a, a whole world of possibilities. And that's true whether we're talking about owners, contractors, uh, engineering firms, uh, EPCMs, all of those uh, types of entities are really being driven to combine costs and time together. What does that do? By, by combining cost and time together, what new possibilities are we opening up for our customers? Well, number one, as we talk about long-term projects, whether we're talking about a 40-year mine, life of mine project, whether we're talking about a, a, a big uh, public-private uh, venture, like a, a bridge or something along those lines, uh, the, the, the element of time is, is critical so we understand our funding requirements, we understand uh, how the money is coming in and going out. Also, earn value. Earn value is becoming more and more prominent in the industry. And obviously, in order to enable earn value, we have to have the element of time. Uh, forecasting and cash flow, whether you're an owner, operator, contractor, everybody wants to know what is our cash flow really going to look like. Okay. So version 11 of Hard Dollar enables all of these things, brings costs and time together to drive those things. So let's take a look at, uh, for the next few minutes, we're going to go through and look at uh, some of the new features in Hard Dollar. We'll focus really on the time phase cost modeling capabilities, but there's uh, dozens of new features uh, in, in version 11. So we're going to focus on time phase cost modeling first. So as we look at some of the features that, that fall into that category, uh, you see them on the screen here. Breaking cost items into periods, uh, doing a manual schedule, um, using custom cost curves in order to really influence how those costs look over time, and then being able to really graph that information on the cash flow graph and look at you know what do those costs look like over time. Let's take a look at that. Here's a project. This is a simple engineering procurement construction project. You can see it's organized around over to the left uh, typical EPCs. So we have our engineering procurement construction. We also have a few other things like a contingency. We have an escalation up here at the top. What we've done is by tying the cost model, as you can see here, our breakdown on the right uh, breaks down our costs into a hierarchy. And Hard Dollar has virtually endless ways to come up with the costs and, and drive these values. But what we've now done is we've added in this element of time. So as we look over here to the right, we see our start and finish dates. Those can come from a, a Primavera schedule, they can come from a Microsoft project schedule, or in this new version, we've even opened up a manual schedule so you can manually put in your start and finish dates. If we go down and let's talk about how we influence the timing of these costs though. If we go down into any of these uh, cost items, let's go to this one right here. We have the new capability to, to break costs into periods, into financial periods. So if we want to break up this particular task into periods, we now have the ability to edit those periods and we can define based on, you can see here I'm using weekly periods, so you can see February 11th, February 18th, right, every week as we go down. We can put in a quantity all the way down here so we can dictate, you know, what of this task, how much of it is going to get done in the first week of February, how much of it's going to get done in the next week, and so on. And you can use weeks, days, months, uh, years, quarters, any, any type of periods you want to use. Okay? And that's going to influence the timing. We only have to estimate the cost of it, model the cost of it one time, uh, as you can see here, I'm using a standard labor resource okay, to get these, this task done. But now, by using those period quantities, we can break that work up over any period of time. 
So once we have a start and finish date and we know the spread of that work over those periods, all of that culminates into a view of costs over time. So if we click on this cash flow, now we can take a look at what does that cost look like? Whether we're talking about engineering work, whether we're talking about construction work or procurement work, all of those tasks are rolling together now and we can see what that cost, uh, how that cost ramps up over time. Now let's say this is a nice kind of ramp up here, but that's not really how it's going to happen in the real world. If we come back here and look at one of the other new features in version 11, which is custom cost curves. Okay, this gives us the ability to really apply a unique curve to each item in, in, the, in the cost model. So if we go down into, let's say, the procurement section, see we have some, a couple of pretty high dollar items in here, these uh, storage tanks and pressure vessels. Instead of doing a linear curve, which is the default, let's go in and uh, apply a, a different type of curve. Okay, so we can use any of these predefined curves. We could also go in and create our own curve with any kind of points we want, as many points on that curve as we want. Let's just do a bell shape. Okay, so we'll do a bell shape curve for each of those, and, and now let's take a look at how that influences the cash flow graph. Okay, so those two major elements of cost, those storage tanks and those vessels, now you can see how their costs are ramping up and then slowing down. Okay, now it might be more logical to do a, a front loaded if it's something we're going to buy up front. Uh, and, and incur most of the cost up front. Okay, but the new feature in version 11 is that we can click that asterisk right there, go in and define our own curve, and put as many different points on that curve as we want, and define how those costs are going to be spread over any uh, points on that curve. Okay. Second thing that we can do is as we start to look at uh, our projected cash flow and let's change these to let's make these front loaded give us a little uh, more realistic view of how that's going to be okay now when we go to that cash flow we can see those costs ramping almost straight up as they hit the storage tanks coming in then the pressure vessels okay the other thing that we can do is we can go in and look at uh, what does our earned value look like and what does our as built cost look like okay so with version 11 uh, we've added these new graphing capabilities down below where we can not only project how do we think the costs are going to look like over time, but as the work continues and progresses, we can actually trace how did it really go. And in fact, let's turn on our revenue as well just for kicks uh, so we can see when our, our revenue is going to be kicking in. If we're the contractor, we, we might want to see you know, when do we collect our money. And let's turn on both of those other lines, as bill cost and earn value. Okay, so now we're going to get quite a few lines on the graph. If we compare the, the red line and the green line, this is a pretty typical project in terms of uh, there are moments of time in this project where our cost exceeds our revenue. We're, we're collecting revenue on a, on a fairly level basis, maybe once a month, every two weeks, uh, whatever it is. Right? And there are periods here where even though we end up at the end, our, our revenue is above our cost. There are periods here where our cost is above our revenue. Good thing to know, right, if we're trying to make sure that we've got financing in place to, to, to cover this project. If we now focus on the black and blue lines, we can also see now that the work has started, and it looks like it started in, in July of 2012, now we can see earned value, okay, uh, which is the black line going up. So as we record progress and record percent complete, we're tracking that black line as showing how much should we have spent to achieve the progress that we have recognized in this project. Okay. So we can compare that black line to the red line and see that uh, we're about right where we want it to be from a cost standpoint, but we're, we started earlier than we expected. Right? We expected to start over here in uh, November when those costs would start ramping up, or excuse me, in September, and we've actually started in July. The blue line is our as-built costs. <clears throat> so we can compare the black and the blue lines to see that our uh, blue as-built costs is coming in a little bit higher than our earned value. Okay? Time-wise, about the same, a little bit of a lag there as you would expect. It takes a while for those bills to come in and get paid. Okay? So lots of ways to look at this, a lot of information that we can graph in terms of comparing how our actual costs comparing to the earned value and then how are both of those comparing to what we had originally forecasted on that red line. So that kind of summarizes the time phase cost modeling capabilities that are in version 11. 
like any good release, there's a lot of new features in this version. So just to give you an overview of some of those other new features, let's just uh, walk through them quickly here. So some of the other things that are in this version, more flexibility for dependent cost items. We've added a tremendous capability to create costs in your cost models that are, that are a function of other costs, whether it's escalation, that's a function of time, uh, whether it's contingencies, which is a function of risk, any manner of costs can be set up that are a function of other costs, dependent on other costs. Uh, we've really taken our Excel linking and embedding to, to new levels uh, with prorating options, uh, with, with new abilities to uh, create dozens and dozens of, of links out to Excel uh, formulas and values and, and, and re really making it easy to manage those links and, and, and see where they're being used in the estimate. Uh, we've, we've also created the ability to create estimates and proposals based on billing rates. Okay, so if you're in the services business or you're in professional services or maintenance or uh, doing time and materials work, uh, we now have the ability to create estimates and you can look at those estimates and present them to your customers based on both your internal cost rates as well as your outside billing rates. And it's a great way to analyze your markup uh, and what your potential margin is going to be on a project uh, while producing reports to your customers that are based on strictly your outside billing rates. We also have a new relationship with InfoMine that allows us to, to, to bring in uh, equipment costs from InfoMine. InfoMine is a fantastic source of uh, mining equipment costs. Uh, we can now point to, to, to the, those values on InfoMine's website and, and pull in those uh, equipment resources into your hard dollar cost models. So if you don't have a lot of history on what a load haul dump machine is going to cost or, or a tunneling machine, whatever it is, uh, we can point to InfoMine's data source and, and bring in those, uh, those costs into your hard dollar estimates. We have a lot of new capabilities around our master cost breakdown structure. You can control in that cost breakdown structure which items uh, are going to come into every new project automatically. You might have certain overheads, indirects, dependencies that you want to populate into every new job automatically uh, so you can control that now. We also have uh, uh, the ability to do some quantity checks as we look up and down the work breakdown structure or cost breakdown structure. We can check for quantities that should add up. So if we look at superiors to subordinates, if you, if you have a relationship where those subordinate quantities should add up to the total, you can do checks on that to make sure that uh, it's, it is functioning the way you would like it to function. Equipment maintenance costs, a uh, big area of functionality in version 11. We've really taken equipment maintenance costs to uh, a new level uh, where you can drive those equipment maintenance costs based on your productive equipment, associate those with a maintenance crew, and uh, have those maintenance costs go up as your productive equipment costs goes up and vice versa. Um, secondary quantities, so we can track, uh, we might want to measure items in multiple quantities. Okay? We might want to measure a concrete item in cubic yards, but also look at it in, in tons. Okay? Um, and that'll help us look at historical costs from different perspectives as we look uh, uh, into the future. We also have user-defined fields now that we can put web links in. So if you're looking at, at tying hard dollar into a SharePoint or you're looking to uh, create references inside your hard dollar projects out to external sources, whether they're specs, whether they're manufacturer or supplier sites, uh, we can point hard dollar values out to external websites. Significant figures uh, as we get into bigger and bigger projects, this is something that our, our customers have asked for. Let's be able to run our reports with uh, a specified number of significant figures. That's in addition to the decimal precision settings that we've already had. Capturing before and after man hours is something that we now do in version 11. So as we make changes to the project, whether those changes are due to a schedule change, a scope change, quantity changes, any of those changes that we make, we're going to capture, uh, and we've always done a great job of capturing what is the impact of that change on our costs. Now we're also measuring that impact in terms of man hours before and after. Uh, we've done a lot of things with Primavera. We now support Primavera version 8.1. Uh, version 8 and 8.1, but we also have moved that synchronization process into the background. So if you're synchronizing a hard dollar cost model with a Primavera schedule, you can let that process go along in the background for your larger projects. We've added some additional user-defined fields. Uh, those user-defined fields can be used for uh, all kinds of purposes for PO numbers, reference numbers, anything you want to use to track those resource employments. 
calculating production as we get into the project delivery side, into job tracking. Uh, we have multiple ways now to calculate our production. Do we want to calculate that production based on the way we estimated it, or is it going to be based on the way we've scheduled it? In either case, uh, we support both of those options. Uh, we've made it quite a bit simpler to search and find account codes, so as you're looking for an appropriate cost code or account code for an item, uh, that's easier than ever now using find and search functions uh, to find the appropriate cost code for an item. And then lastly, we have created quite a few new reports. I've listed some of them here, uh, some new resource utilization reports, uh, some new grouping on our CBS detail report. Uh, we have a, an estimate summary report now where you can define how you want that grouped, how do we want to roll things up. Uh, some new pay item reports and some, some price breakdown reports uh, that are really great, uh, give you great visibility into the, to the cost model and, and give you new ways to present your estimates and proposals to your customer or your internal customer. As I mentioned, we support Primavera version 8 and 8.1 now, so as we're applying that time synchronization to the project, uh, we can do that either through the manual schedule, which is new in version 11, or as we continue to do with Primavera and we now support the latest version of Primavera. The hard dollar server is now 64-bit, so that's going to improve uh, performance, especially on, uh, on, on large deployments. And then along those same lines, with large deployments, we now have the ability to push the install to the individual users. So if you're in charge of, of, of deploying hard dollar uh, to hundreds of users, you only have to install it one time. All of your users will then uh, automatically get pushed the appropriate update so they're running the same version that's on your server. So that wraps it up for what's new in version 11. Kind of covered it pretty quickly, but uh, hopefully we've given you enough uh, to pique your interest. Uh, feel free to come to www.harddollar.com. On our website, we have lots of uh, data sheets, uh, movies, and other information about version 11. We'd love for you to click on the link to schedule a, a demonstration so we can show you Hard Dollar version 11 and how it relates to your particular requirements. Again, uh, thank you for watching. This is Brad Barth. Thanks for joining us.